hope. Hope is a superpower. With hope, almost anything feels possible. But a life without hope can feel pretty impossible. A life without hope, when you're meant to be having the happiest time of your life, is even harder. A life without hope, when you're meant to be having the happiest time of your life, and you're now responsible for not just getting yourself through each day, but also looking after and keeping alive a tiny, brand new human being, can feel completely unmanageable. This is the experience of one in 10 new mothers. Postnatal depression, which is so much more than just a lack of hope, which in fact can be an utterly debilitating and petrifying illness, affects one in 10 new mothers. So why are we not talking about this? Almost the second a baby is born, we seem to forget about the parents. Almost always, this is because we're so excited and happy that a beautiful new life has begun. But postnatal depression is dangerous, and people experiencing it need help. Mothers can feel scared of being alone with their baby, scared of themselves and their thoughts, scared of even admitting what they're experiencing. Suicide is the leading cause of maternal death in the year after birth, accounting for 39% of all maternal deaths in that period. And in the UK, the rates of maternal death have risen by 15% in the last 10 years. Yet, we know, with help, women can recover, and there is help available, there are just quite a lot of barriers for mothers to accessing traditional help, such as talking therapies and antidepressants. Fear. Many women are scared of actually telling someone how they're feeling in case they get their child taken away, or fear of taking antidepressants whilst breastfeeding. Guilt. Guilt about being a bad mum. Guilt about the impact on their partner or family. Shame and embarrassment there are still societal and cultural stigmas associated with postnatal depression. And lack of awareness. Many women just don't simply realise that what they're experiencing is postnatal depression. And they're just some of the barriers that mothers have explained. So it was clear that an alternative to traditional and medical pathways was needed. I'm the founder and managing director of a not-for-profit social enterprise that specialises in exactly this. We come up with creative and innovative solutions to traditional healthcare problems. And our solution might not be quite what you expect. Our solution is singing. Now, at my organisation, Breathe Arts Health Research. We've been working in the field of postnatal depression since 2017. And we don't just hope that singing can help postnatal depression. We actually know. Our Singing for Postnatal Depression program, Breathe Melodies for Mums, is grounded in pioneering scientific research that explicitly shows that singing can both reduce symptoms of postnatal depression and lead to a speedier recovery from symptoms. Now, it is generally accepted that in society, singing is good for improving mood. Most people would agree with that. But this is different. The research our programme is based on is conducted with multi-year scientific studies, including randomised control trials, analysis of biomedical markers such as cortisol, the stress hormone, in both mothers and babies, and validated postnatal depression clinical screening tools. So we have data that shows that this works. The research study our programme is based on was conducted by Royal College of Music and Imperial College London. 
It looked at the impact of singing on mothers with moderate to severe symptoms of postnatal depression. And what it showed was that singing could reduce symptoms of postnatal depression by 35% in just six weeks. And by week 10, symptoms had decreased further to 40%. It also showed that the singing group had a significantly speedier recovery than the other control groups in the trial. And when you have postnatal depression, every day counts. In addition to these stats, it showed that singing could provide an increase in mother-baby bonding, a decrease in cortisol, the stress hormone, and an enhanced sense of achievement and identity amongst mothers. Mothers also reported that they were using singing as a tool outside of the sessions to soothe their baby, therefore empowering them long term. Our most recent five-year scientific research study, in collaboration with University College London and King's College London, simply backs this up. It took an even larger sampler size of mothers and babies and showed a sustained reduction in postnatal depression long term. The OWL singing group is not your usual mum and baby singing group. It puts mum, not baby, right at the centre. And it is strictly a nursery rhyme free zone. <laughs> you don't need any experience of singing or to be any good at singing to take part. Although we do ensure everyone sounds awesome by the end. We teach mums to sing songs from different cultures, in four-part harmonies and in rounds. We create a safe and inclusive space for mums to be themselves and to focus on themselves. There's an unspoken knowledge that everyone in the room is facing the same challenges. But the difference is we use singing as a tool to address these challenges. We do not talk about postnatal depression. For the mums, they simply come and they sing. From our perspective, however, it's slightly different. We have carefully designed every element of the programme to make sure it meets the specific needs of mothers struggling with postnatal depression. So, for example, we bring together groups of 10 to 12 mums and babies, an ideal number to create a sense of community without a sense of overwhelm. We teach songs in multiple languages and songs that the mums won't know already necessarily because that helps to keep them cognitively present in the room as they learn. It also encourages a sense of accomplishment and achievement as they master challenging compositions. We sing songs in rounds, and that's to encourage eye contact amongst mothers, therefore helping things like social connection, which can often be a struggle if you're facing the challenges of postnatal depression. And we choose songs with lyrics that help to uplift and empower, and others that help them to let go and release emotions. And they're just some of the intricacies behind the program that make it a highly effective intervention for postnatal depression. We are now in the process of scaling this program across London and training teams across Europe to deliver this in their local geography. We're working with the World Health Organization as their official training partner to look at how you can implement and translate an evidence-based singing program into new cultures and new countries. And now, very excitingly, in a tiny village in Romania, mothers who are struggling with postnatal depression can access a culturally relevant version of our Singing for Postnatal Depression program, Breathe Melodies for Mums. But we know it's not just mums that struggle. We're now piloting similar programs for dads and partners, and we're soon to be reaching those in the LGBTQ community. So this is just the beginning. We've now shown scientifically the impact that singing can have on postnatal depression. And we've seen firsthand how singing can give mums back that superpower of hope. 
But still, sometimes, just sometimes, the power of singing can still take us all by surprise. There's a fire burning in my soul. There's a fire burning in my soul. And it's telling me that I'm somebody. There's a fire burning in my soul. There is hope rising in my soul. There is hope rising in my soul. And it's telling that I'm somebody. There is hope rising in my soul. There is hope rising in my soul. There is hope rising in my soul. Oh.